uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and I just uh, was noting as we were singing there, uh, two wonders I confess, the wonders of His glorious love and my own worthlessness. You, know, you put those two together, you know, what, what grace, uh, what mercy you know, God has shown to us that, uh, that we can be saved. And uh, this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, the theme is the simplicity of the cross. Life seems so complicated sometimes, doesn't it? Things in life can seem so complicated. Now, there's a lot of things that claim our attention. But uh, the Bible encourages us to keep our eyes on Jesus, keep our eyes on, on the cross. Let me read 1 Corinthians 2, just the first five verses. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Just stop reading there. I was thinking about all the things that claim our attention this week, and you, you can just go on and on with the list, you know, wars, weather, <laughs> you know, think about the things you talk about when, when you meet with people, family, health, someone that's wronged you, I mean, you can really focus your whole life on a wrong that's been done to you. Then you get into Bible things, and, you know, you can, you can get so caught up in prophecy or Bible versions or, you know, there's all kinds of things, but... One of the focuses we need to have is Jesus and the cross of Christ. The focus that we, we need to have, I should say. Uh, Jesus is our foundation. Just across the page in my Bible, 1 Corinthians 3.11, other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know, that's the foundation. He, it, it's a person. It's Jesus. Uh, Jesus is our focus. Hebrews 12, he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We need to keep our, keep our eyes on Jesus. And uh, I'll use this expression that he uses, uh, that the Bible often uses. We need to preach the cross. You know, we need to preach Jesus. Um, preach just means to proclaim, to let, let people know. And when I'm saying the cross, I don't mean the wooden cross that Jesus died on. I mean the gospel, uh, the blood of Christ, the fact that Jesus died and was buried and, and rose again. You might say, well, uh, you're the preacher, I'm not a preacher. <laughs> well, is Mark 16, uh, 15 not for you? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel? It is for you. <laughs> it's for all of us. We're all preachers. It just depends what we're preaching. And uh, we need to keep our, our focus on the cross of Christ. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, that the cross is the power of God. Look there, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Later in verse 23, he says, we preach Christ crucified. See, Christ is not just a good person. He's not just somebody that people should know about. He's the Savior. He's the one who died for our sins. And in fact, in Romans 1, it says that the cross is not only the power of God, it's the power of God to salvation. Romans 1, verse 16 I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Listen, if you're saved, it's because of the cross. <laughs> it's because Jesus died for your sins. The blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. It's what God uses to save people. If we're going to spend eternity with God, uh, we've got to go to the cross. We've got to, to understand the gospel. If you're saved, look at Colossians chapter 1. It's not too far away there. Uh, verse 20, if you're saved, it, it, it was the cross that reconciled you to God. Colossians 1, I'll read several verses here, verse, starting with verse 20. He says, Having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself. By Him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you, okay, here's, here's us, you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death, 
to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. Listen, when you stand before God, when I stand before God, I will be holy. I will be unblameable. I will be unreprovable. God will not point at me and say, oh, I know what you did. He'll say, I see Jesus. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, it's Christ. It's the blood of Christ. It's the cross of Christ that reconciles us to God. Don't lose sight of that. You know, sometimes we get so busy in life that we, uh, I'll use a term, we marginalize the cross. And when I think of a margin, I think of something written. You know, you've got things that are written, and then you've got the margins. Margins are okay. I, man, I write in my margins. But we need to be careful that we don't take the cross from the, the main message to something we just make a little note about. Christ is the main message, the cross of Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying there in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1, he said, I, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom. You know, a lot of times we get so caught up with, with all the words and, and all the ideas and everything, we forget the gospel is very simple. In fact, he warns us later in 2 Corinthians, he says, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. There's a simplicity in Christ. And we need to remember that. Now, there's a lot of things that push aside the cross of Christ. Look in, in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, verse 22. He gives us two here. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. There's two. <laughs> you know, a lot of people are looking for a sign. Oh, God, give me a sign. <laughs> uh, that's not what we need. We need the cross. We need the reality of what Jesus has done. The Bible says we come to God by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Listen, if God gives you a sign, be careful you don't trust the sign. Trust God. There can things happen in your life that will point you to the Lord. Don't trust in the thing that points to you, points to him, I should say. Someone pointed out to me some years ago, there's a lot of signs around that point places. You know what? They never go anywhere. <laughs> there's signs that say Brisbane, Brisbane, 20 kilometers you know, Rockhampton, whatever, you know. They never go anywhere. <laughs> they just sit there. Uh, we don't need signs. We need to be there. We need to know Christ. Uh, don't get away from the simplicity that's in Christ. A and I won't go on about this, but there's plenty of religions where they'll give you sensationalism. If that's what you want, the devil will, will provide that. God gave his son. That's what we need. The other one is scholarship. He says the Greeks seek after wisdom. Uh, in... Uh, Verse 17 of that chapter, he said, Not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Some people are so worried about the words. You know, man's wisdom. Oh, that's, you know, what a clever way to present. No, we don't need cleverness. We need Christ. Uh, we preach the cross. Uh, there's many things that push aside the, the cross of Christ. Uh, he talks about in verses 10 through 12, divisions. You know, divisions amongst Christians can push aside the importance of the cross. You can get so, so involved with the disagreement you have with another Christian or another group or uh, family members or so on that you forget, hey, we're, we're to be focused on the cross, on the gospel. There was a song we used to sing when I was, uh, some years ago, let's forget about ourselves and magnify the Lord and worship Him. <laughs> you know, quit, quit worrying about these divisions and focus on Jesus. He said there in in verse 12 of chapter 1, this I say that every one of you saith, I'm a Paul, I have Apollos, I have Cephas, I have Christ. He's talking about the divisions. He says, is Christ divided? Is there a different Christ for different people? No. If someone's saved, they're saved by the cross of the one and only Jesus Christ, the Son of God. We need to focus and we need to preach the cross. Keep your eye on the cross. Preach the cross. There's another verse, and this is my second point this morning. We're to glory in the cross. Not only are we to preach the cross, to proclaim it, we're to glory in the cross. The, the verse is Galatians 6, 14. And he says there, God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, we live in a world of self-glorification. Have you watched a sporting event lately? Man, they are experts at self-glorification. They'll pat themselves on the chest. <laughs> If they could, they'd pat themselves on the back. You know? <laughs> oh, how great they are. <laughs> Look at me. 
Self-glorification. God says, that's not the way we're to live. We're to glory in the cross. The glory of not life is not in all these things that are going on, not in all the things that claim our attention. It's in the cross. There's the glory. In uh, 1 Corinthians 1, verse 29, he says, this is a real simple statement, that no flesh should glory in his presence. The glory is not about you. It's not about me. I can guarantee you, when we stand before God, we're not the one that the focus is going to be on. <laughs> The glory is not going to be for us. It's going to be for Him. That no flesh should glory in His, his presence. Verse 31, that according as, as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Listen, that's what your life and my life needs to be, glory, glorying in the Lord. Paul practiced this. Did you notice verse 3 of chapter 2? He says, I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now, if Paul was glorifying, him, glorifying himself, he would have worked out how to get rid of that fear and trembling. Yeah, the world would have an answer. They'd probably have a drug. They'd have an exercise. You could do yoga, you know, or something. And uh, you know, he'd, he'd, work, he'd get rid of that. But you see, he, was, he wasn't glorif glorying in himself. His weakness and fear and trembling, who cares? The glory is not for him. It's for the Lord. And I think we can take a, a great lesson from that. We need to glory in the cross. There's going to be difficult things. There's going to be hard things. It's hard to serve the Lord. Uh, he could have followed man's wisdom. He said that wasn't his goal, though, man's wisdom. He wanted to demonstrate the spirit and power. We're to glory in the cross. And let me say this. If you'll glory in the cross, it will change you. Number one, it'll make you humble. When you glory in the cross, you see yourself as the sinner. Uh, Paul wrote, and I think we all can, can apply this to our lives. It's 1 Timothy 1.15 where he says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, of reception, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Listen, you focus on the cross, you're not going to be focusing on the sins of others. You're going to see yourself a sinner. If you're focusing on the sins of others, you're not glorying in the cross. It'll make you humble. It'll also make you grateful. We sang that song this morning, I was once a sinner, but I came pardoned to receive my, from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always keeps His word. Aren't you glad? Aren't you grateful that God would love a sinner like you and like me? What a blessing. You focus on the cross. It'll, it'll help keep you humble. And, and let me say, humility is a good thing. It'll make you grateful. It'll make you willing to forgive. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. See, there's the key. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. God forgives you. you know, we've seen people whose, whose marriages have had problems because one has been unfaithful. And it's real easy then for the one who's wrong to say, I'll never forgive that one. Our marriage can never be restored. Listen, there is no one who has never broken their word. You've broken your word. I've broken my word. And we want and we expect God to forgive us. And yet sometimes we won't extend that mercy to others. If you glory in the cross, you'll be willing to forgive because you'll see yourself as a sinner just like them. God doesn't want us to be hard-hearted. God wants us to be tender-hearted. Glory in the cross will change you. Glorying in the cross will change your relationships as well. This, it's kind of uh, a scary thing, but uh, the cross will break enmities. There, there are people who naturally would be enemies, but because they're both Christians, they're not. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 16, talks about the general idea of Jew and Gentile. How that there's 
you know, there's enmity and, and so on. And he says that he, that's Jesus, might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. If you glory in the cross, it, it will break enmities. I heard of, of a woman who'd, who'd been in the prison camps in, in World War II. She ended up in a church where one of the guards was also in the, in the church. Listen, it, the cross will, will break enmities. People that were on, on opposite sides of, of the war. People that, uh, one that mistre even mistreated the other. And yet, when Christ comes into the picture, it, the enmity disappears. Uh, we had a man and woman, a husband and wife in our church in Western Australia, that, uh, Aboriginal people, and uh, he, he said, without Christ, we would be enemies. Our tribes were enemies of each other. But in Christ, we can marry, we can, the enmity is gone. You know, Paul, can you imagine having been persecuted by Paul and then have him come to your church? <laughs> Paul had been a Christian hater, a Christian killer. And you read the book of Acts, they were scared. People said, no, you talk, no, you talk to him. <laughs> and uh, it, it was a scary thing, but the, the wall was broken down by Christ. Right. The cross will break enmities. But let me warn you, and we talked about this some in Sunday school this morning, the cross will also make enmities. There are people when you trust Christ, they'll say, I'm against you. Uh, there are religions where if you change your religion from their false religion to anything, but especially Christianity, they will do their best to physically kill you. Jesus warned in Matthew 10, a man's foes shall be they of his own household. When I was a teenager in our church, we had a man who, when he got saved, he said his family had his funeral. To them, he was dead. If, you, if you're going to trust Christ, it can make enmities. Uh, we, we worked in, in an area in Western Australia where there was a lot of European people, and uh, we realized that they were very tribal. <laughs> it was their families. And for a person to become a Christian, they would basically have to say, I am no longer going to follow my family. I'm going to follow Christ. Man, it was tough. It was very hard. But you know, you won't stand before your family in eternity. You will stand before God. And you'll give an account of what you've done with His Son, Jesus Christ. The cross will break enmities, but it can also make enmities. Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians 6 that uh, as Christians, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And, you know, there's a spiritual battle going on. There, there's a spiritual enmity. There's religious enmity. Uh, as, as a Christian, you know, the early Christians in Acts chapter 5, for instance, as they would preach the gospel, sometimes they would be arrested for it. And they would tell them, uh, don't preach this Jesus anymore. Their answer was, we have to obey God rather than men. And the, the people, the council says they went away and took counsel to slay them. Listen, following the Lord, glorying in the cross can make enmities. Glory in the cross. Do it anyway. It'll change you. It'll change your relationships. And we need to realize there are enemies of the cross. You know, being a Christian is, is not unopposed. Paul often talked about being a soldier of the cross. In uh, uh, Philippians chapter 3, take, take a look there if you would please. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 18. Uh, the last part of the verse, he says, even, uh, I now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. And the strange thing about this, this truth, this passage, is that he seems to be mainly talking about professing Christians. In verse 17, he, he talks about the right way to go. He says, Brethren, be followers together with me, and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. You know, we have Christian examples and Christian leadership and you know, God's Word and the church and so on. Uh, there's a way to go as Christians. But then he says, verse 18, For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. 
Now, maybe these are people who are not saved but are, are, are part of, uh, of a church. Um, their God is their belly. The Bible says we, there's only one God, and it's not you. It's not me. It's not what I think. It's not what I feel. It's the Lord. And uh, he's talking here about people who are led by their appetites. And, you know, you see so many professing Christians who money is more important than God. Uh, I've seen some where sex is more important than God. Possessions, uh, themselves, their feelings. And, and the Bible says that's enmity to the cross of Christ. Instead of the cross being getting the glory, instead of the cross being their focus, they're the focus. Man, be careful. Don't let that be you. He says they're, they're proud of what they should be ashamed of, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. That just means they don't value the cross. Their value in life is, what do I get out of it? What, what is it for me? Well, let me ask you, what about you this morning? Are you relying on earthly things for salvation? You know, to go to heaven... I often have people, I ask them, if you died today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? The most common answers are earthly things. Oh, yeah, I've been good. You know what the Bible says about that? It says you're calling God a liar if you say you've never sinned. God says we've all sinned. People are relying on earthly things. Oh, I've been baptized. I go to church. God will forgive me. I had one guy, uh, I said to him, you know, if, if there's no God, I said, I don't lose anything, but you'll lose everything. Oh, no, he said, God will forgive me. <laughs> I don't have to believe him. I can just kick him in the, in the teeth. doesn't make any sense, does it? We don't need to mind earthly things. We need to glory in the cross. Are you relying on the cross or are you relying on earthly things? We sing the song, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. What a blessing it is that we can have that assurance. God tells us in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 18, the preaching of, of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. We preach Christ crucified. Later on, as we read in chapter 2, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You know, the Bible says very clearly, we can't save ourselves. We can't be good enough to go to heaven. I mean, religion tries to promote that, but that's not what God says. God says, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's the name of Jesus. It's the cross. Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What a blessing. <laughs> what a blessing to know there is a way, that it's eternal, that it's right. Uh, don't try to bypass the simplicity of the cross. Uh, there's a song, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. Uh, we should have sung it this morning. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. Listen, if you're going to go to God, you've got to go by way of the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us from sin. And the Bible says all have sinned. It says the wages of sin is death. That means separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 makes this simple statement, Christ died for our sins. <laughs> what a blessing. Christ died for our sins. Let me ask you this morning, have you been born again? Have you been born again? Salvation is simple because of the cross. We often talk about the simple plan of salvation. Well, it wasn't simple for God. God worked it out so that He could offer it to us as a gift, paid for by His precious blood. Let me encourage you to trust Jesus Christ today. The simplicity of the cross. It's so simple. You have sin. Christ died for your sin. He offers you forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. If you are saved, let me encourage you to glory in the cross. If you don't know what that means, figure it out. <laughs> Ask the Lord about it. Keep thinking about it. Preach it to others. Talk to others. I mean, if, if you don't know what to say, just say, um, I want to talk to you about the cross. <laughs> Put a cross on, wear a cross, and, and uh, say, I want to talk to you about the cross. Not this one, <laughs> but the cross Jesus died on. And see where it goes. I don't know. Couldn't hurt. Uh, let's glory in the cross. Let's focus on the, the cross of Jesus Christ. There's a song in our hymnal, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There, a precious fountain.
free to all, that's the next words, uh, flowing stream, flows, healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. We're going to sing that song, page 65 in, in your hymnal there, if you uh, take your songbook. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Come, come on up, Azrael, and lead us in that, that song. Well, we're getting done pretty early this morning, that's all right. As we sing, listen, if you're not saved, if, if you're not sure whether you're born again, if you don't know what that means, or if you're not sure if you died, whether you'd go to heaven or not, uh, come talk to me afterwards, will you? And, and let us show you from the Bible how to be saved. We'll, we'll not embarrass you or uh, you know, try to make you do something you don't want to do. But if, if you're concerned about your soul, deal with it today. The Bible says today is the day. Now is the time. Uh, if you're a Christian... Uh, but you haven't followed the Lord in believer's baptism or there's just there's sin in your life that you're, you're not turning over to the Lord. Take care of that today. Jesus, keep me near the cross. Let's, uh, 